we're going to be looking at reading, writing, fill in the blanks. Reading, writing, this contributes to both of those tasks. Let's check it out. Let's have a look at what you need to do to manage this task with confidence. So details. When you get into the test, it's going to look something like this. You've got a text with several blanks. And if you click on the blank, you get a drop down menu with a list of choices, usually four. In the instructions say five. I've never seen five. I've only ever seen four, but maybe there could be five. You need to select the best answer. Well, that sounds easy. How do you do it? Okay, so you choose a word from the drop down menu. Yep, got that. That's easy. Okay, so these are the steps that I'm suggesting that you take to maximize your chances in this task. Step one, read the first line. That's going to give you an idea of what the task is generally about. So we've got Umami was first identified in Japan in 1908 when Dr. Kikone Akita concluded that something, something. Okay, what's it about? It's about a doctor in Japan who discovered something. Maybe you know the meaning of umami, maybe not. You've just got to manage with the knowledge that you've got. Remember in the reading section, you've got to manage your own time. So if you want to take three minutes to read through it very carefully, you can do that but you'll run out of time in the reading test. You need to use strategies to shorten your time. Okay, so we've read the first line. It's generally about a Japanese doctor who discovered something. So now we're just going to read a few words before and after each gap or before and after each blank, same meaning. For example, he conducted something that found that the high concentration of something he conduct, what do you conduct? So he's a doctor in Japan. He discovered something. He conducted something. So maybe we already have an idea of what the word could be. So if we look at the grammar, this is a verb he conducted. I'm expecting a noun for this one. Okay. So look at the grammar, collocation, conduct, and in my mind, I've already got a strong collocation. Do you have something in mind? And the context, okay, we're going to eliminate incorrect options. So he conducted experiences. Nope, he conducted contests, possible. He conducted experiments. Oh, I like that one. He conducted attempts. Okay, so I can rule two out. You don't conduct experiences. You don't conduct attempts. That leaves us with contests and experiments, both possible. Now, the word in my mind was research. You conduct research. Which one of these is closest to research and does it work grammatically? Okay, so what did you choose? Do you have an idea? So at this stage... Not one, not four, it's two or three, which one? And so you basically try each remaining option and then you choose the one that sounds best. Contests, experiments, contests, experiments, experiments sounds best. That's actually a collocation too, to conduct experiments. So you go through this process of elimination based on the context, based on the grammar, based on collocations. Are you ready? You're going to do one now. Okay, so in the test, these are all drop downs. I can't do a drop down on a video, so I've put them here on the right hand side. You've got your four words for gap one, you've got your four words for gap two, and so on. I've got two minutes on the timer. I'm going to give you a little bit more than that because in the test, it should take you two minutes, but if it's up to two and a half minutes, sometimes that's okay for a longer text, for a difficult text. So I'll give you a little bit more than the two minutes. So you're going to read the first line. You can read the second line as well if you want to, but just read a little bit to get the context. What's it talking about? 
then jump straight to the gaps, read a little before, a little after, which word do you think is best? Okay, two minutes, off you go. I'll give you a little bit more time. Okay, now that first one you should know already. So we'll check those answers. First one we said was experiments. Now, I've got a question for you. Did you follow my instructions or did you go back and did you read that whole thing? If you read the whole thing, you're wasting your time. You haven't got time to do that in this test. You really need to read the first line or two, work out what it's about, then just read around the words. If you don't quite get it, go back a little bit further or read on a little bit more then make your best guess. If you know it, beautiful, you can do it quickly. Okay, let's look at the second one. I'm only going to read around it. So MSG, the seasoning that would become something the world over, would become known the world over, would become popular the world over. So I'm going from my knowledge of collocations, from my knowledge of context, so the seasoning would become, let's look at the options, would become spread. Grammatically, that's not possible. That would spread would be okay, but become spread, no. So rule out the first one. That would become exported, no. That would be exported, that could work. So it's not one, it's not two. Would become exclusive the world over. That works grammatically. Would become popular the world over. Okay, so... Three and four, both possible, strongest collocation, the one that sounds best to me, popular, would become popular the world over. Even popular the world over, that in itself is a collocation. Would become popular, that's also a collocation and grammatically that works. Okay, number three. Um, one of the five individual tastes sensed by receptors on the something. So it's a taste sensed by something. So where do you experience taste? Mouth, by receptors on the mouth, on the mouth, in the mouth. That doesn't work. What are my options? Okay, so taste sensed by receptors. This is linked to the word receive. 
sensed by receptors on the fingers. No, I don't taste with my fingers. On the mouth, in the mouth maybe. On the tongue. Yes, I taste things on my tongue. That works. On the jaws. No. So from the context, tongue. Last one. Up until our research, there's something wisdom in the scientific community. The prevailing wisdom, that's the collocation I immediately think of. What are my options? The predominant wisdom, that's possible. The insignificant wisdom, no, that doesn't work at all. The important wisdom, possible but odd. The erroneous wisdom, this is linked to the word error. The erroneous wisdom, that's quite odd as well. So only one of them works in terms of collocation, context. It makes sense to me. Predominant. How did you go? Let's check that scoring. So how is it scored? Well, there's four words. Four points are possible. If you got the four words, you've got four points. Three words, three points. Two words, two points. One word, one point. No words, zero. So this one, if you've got no idea, guess, but you want to use that strategy of ruling out words you know, can't be this, can't be this, I've got two left, yeah, I don't know. At that point, make your best guess and keep moving. So about two minutes for this task. If you go a bit over, that's fine. Over two and a half minutes though, no, absolutely not. Just guess.